some sequence. But then how do we do that? We might use our JK flip-flops. And we did discuss JK flip-flops in the previous chapter. So it's nothing new to you. And there's our first two-bit asynchronous counter. The way we've connected it is the J and the K inputs are both connected to a I. So it's permanently in which condition? Yes, it's in a toggle condition all the time, so it's continuously going to toggle as you clock it. And note, on the first flip-flop, so this is my least significant bit, on counters, when you draw the counter, your least significant bit is always on the left-hand side. But when we write it down, the least significant bit is on the right-hand side. There's Q0, there's Q1, the two outputs, and then this, on the first flip-flop, the output here, the not Q output is connected to the clock input of the next flip-flop. And that's why it is asynchronous. And the clock only goes into the first flip-flop <coughs> on that clock. Right. So obviously this flip-flop here has to wait for this flip-flop before it can change. This one changes immediately on the clock pulse. And that's the reason why it's called asynchronous. As soon as you have the clock pulse going into all of the devices at the same time, then it is synchronous. But those synchronous counters, we're going to discuss this after this. Now, let's develop the timing diagram for this. All right, here we've got our clock. We know we, we have two flip-flops. We're going to need four clock pulses to do the job for us. We draw, in this case, just for explanation purposes, they draw on the not Q output as well. Right, to show you here. And there we've got Q0 and there's Q1, because those are the two clock pulses that we need to look at, which is important. So let's start off with the first clock. Counter starts off in a reset condition. We need to assume that, but it usually will be like that. It will start from 0, 0, 0. And it's easy to get that. You'll simply just clear the counter. There's the first clock pulse. Remember, this is exactly the same as what we did in the previous chapter. The JK flip-flop is still working the same. It's just we've connected two together now to form a counter. So there's the first positive edge. It's a positive edge JK. Do you agree? There's no bubble there, so it is a positive edge trigger flip-flop. As soon as the first positive edge comes in, what is Q0 going to do? It's going to toggle, so it goes to a 1. Right. Now, what is Q1 going to do? Q1 now looks at not Q0 to see if it's going to toggle or not. Because this now becomes a clock pulse input for Q1. Do you agree? Because there it goes. Right. Right. The clock hasn't got an influence there directly. But now, what do we see? Q0 goes from a 0 to a 1. So not Q goes from a 1 to a 0, which is a negative edge. Do you agree? So that is a negative edge, can Q1 change? No, because Q1 also changes on a positive edge. Right? So it's going to stay the same until the next clock pulse, so that stays the same. There's a next clock pulse coming in. I know we're going to toggle again. Q0 goes down. But now, what does not Q0 do? Not Q0 goes from a positive, uh, from a 0 <coughs> to a 1, which is a positive edge. So Q1 now will change. Okay. But you don't always have to have not Q0 here to see that. You can work on Q0 and Q0. So when is Q1 going to change? Q1 is going to change when Q0 goes from a high to a low because then not Q0 goes from a high to a high. Right. So you don't have to have this. On the next, um, on the three bit, we don't show that. So it's going to stay the same until the next clock pulse. On the next clock pulse, Q0, there's a next edge, right? so it goes to a positive edge, or toggle, so it goes to a 1. Q1, what does Q1 do? Q1 looks at, not Q0, it goes, Q0 goes from a 0 to a 1, so not Q0 goes 1, 0, it's a negative edge, so it is not going to change, it still stays the same until the next clock pulse. Right. On the next clock pulse, what happens? Positive edge, Q0 toggles, it goes to a low. Right? And what does Q1 do? Q1 looks at not Q0, and that goes from a 
no to a I, which is a positive edge. So it's going to toggle. And let's see if it's correct. We started off with 0, 0. So that gives me a decimal value of 0. Then we've got 1, 1, 0. That's 1. And what do we have here? 0, 1, which is 2. Then we have 1, 1, which is 3. And then after that, we expect, expect the counter to go back to 0 again, and it does go back to 0 again.